Hey, smarty pants. You can get a great job after college, but you have to know how to play the game to get a great job after college. And here is your rule book. Even if you've been out of school for a while, if you want to increase your income by switching jobs, or you could use some help navigating workplace culture so you can get promoted or have a better work-life balance, you have to know how to play the game. Here is your rule book. I wish I had a book like this years ago. My life would have been so much better. Uh, in this video, I'll share some of the best tips from Power Mood by Sam DeMassey. Sam, I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing your last name. That you don't hear in other places to help you land a job after college or any time and to do awesome once you're there. If these tips are helpful, stay tuned to the end where I'm going to give you a breakdown of the book so you can know if you should go out and get it yourself because this is seriously chocked full of absolute job hunting gold. I'm Kate, the money librarian, here to help smart people stop feeling dumb about money. If that sounds good to you, be sure to hit that subscribe button. And if you want some quick tips to save a lot of money and stop stressing about your money, check out my 24 easy money moves, link in the description. If I had to choose one piece of advice to give to my former self, this is probably it. Apply for jobs even if you don't meet 100% of the qualifications. I didn't apply to many jobs that I thought were a great fit for me and the employer because I didn't meet 100% of the requirements. You know, on that section in the job uh, description where it's like required skills, turns out it's not really required. Thing is, men apply to jobs when they only meet 60% of those requirements. But women will apply to jobs when they meet 100%, which is what I did and probably lost out on some really great jobs because of it. Sam says, shoot your shot. Even if you only meet 60% of the qualifications, if you think this could be a great fit for you and the employer, apply. That list may look like a hard and fast rule to the applicant, like a you must be this tall to ride requirement, when it's actually just like a wish list to Santa. Passion, personality, interests, all kinds of things might go far further than previous experience or required education. Plus, many skills are transferable, and that's where your resume and cover letter come in. If you know someone graduating, a recent grad, or somebody who's looking to switch jobs, hit that share button and send this video to them. Writing resumes and cover letters is just awful. If you hate it, you're not alone. It's really a terrible task, uh, especially because so many of us are doing it wrong. How do you write a resume that gets you an interview? Honestly, if you follow her resume and cover letter suggestions, which she gives you templates for, like she goes into a lot of detail on this stuff, you will appear polished and truly stand out as an excellent candidate for the position. I think what most people get wrong with resumes is that we think resumes should be a list of our previous job tasks. And that's not really correct. Like, that's kind of part of it, but no. They don't want to know what you do day to day. They want to know what you achieved. She says your resume should be a brag sheet, and I love that term. Too many people, especially women, are taught not to brag, which makes sense in a social situation. But this is not a social situation. This is for a job, so bragging is what you have to do. Don't waste their time. Just give them what they're looking for. You can do this by staying away from listing tasks or giving others credit, which women tend to do a lot. I know I've been guilty of that, like, a lot. And she really breaks it down in her book. She says, you know, what you're doing when you're using verbs like coordinated or facilitated, you're kind of giving credit to other people. Instead, she encourages the use of dynamic verbs like managed, crafted, led, strategized, developed, etc., 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 because these show ownership. They are diva words, and the company is looking for a diva to come on stage and knock everyone's socks off. Now, her example is if you had a job filing paperwork all day, don't write, filed paperwork. You know, that's, who cares? She gives us an amazing makeover by saying, quote, managed employee information database and maintained 100% compliance for all six audits from 2021 to 2022. I mean, that tells a 
story that celebrates the work instead of just uh, filed stuff. You know, it takes ownership and it shows an achievement within a time frame. So much more powerful, right? It's going to take you a lot longer time, but it is worth the time and effort to do it right because you could get your dream job. So read the book for more details on how to do this, or I recommend following her on Instagram or TikTok. That's how I found her. I love her Instagrams. They are like punchy to the point and really powerful, really informative. After changing to dynamic verbs in your resume, you want to show results, metrics if you have them, and your best guesstimate if you don't. If your job is eighth grade English language arts teacher, you know, don't say graded papers. Like they know you graded papers. You're an English teacher. What sets you apart is if you can say something like launched innovative extracurricular that increased average income in class reading level from fifth to eighth in 2021, 2022, and 2023. Like, dang, that is impressive. Or, you know, whatever. I, I think that that actually would make you like a super teacher, which, okay, all teachers kind of are, but you know what I mean. After following her resume and cover letter tips, Get your foot in the door. What are you supposed to do in the interview? Well, yeah, okay, prepare. But there's one question you are almost guaranteed to get and the majority of applicants flub it up. Tip three for getting a great job after college or anytime, how to masterfully answer the tell me about yourself question in a job interview. Prepare for this question because it will get asked. Sam says, tell them one, what you do. Give it just a headline. This is what I do. Two, achievements, the things you have done that relate to this role, and you should know what these are because you already wrote them in your resume. And then three, tie in those achievements or what you've done previously to this role and why you are excited about it. So let's say you're graduating with an education degree and want to teach high school English literature. I don't know why I'm like all about the high school English teachers today, but I just am. Okay. I think you'd answer the question like this, and this is something I put together based on her template for the fictional person and the fictional job that I made up. Okay, let's go. It would look more like this. I am a recent college graduate with one year of 10th grade English literature student teaching experience and three years of tutoring experience. That's your headline. I've created curriculum around everything from Chaucer to Baldwin, increased the average 2T grade from C- minus to a B+, plus, and boosted every 2T's reading level by at least two levels from where they started within one year. Achieve. I'm excited for this role because I love working with students and I am passionate about your school's focus on critical thinking. Have an answer to this question down cold. When you can answer this question well, you are confident. You seem like you have it all together. You are inviting a conversation and really a great interview is more like a conversation. To answer the tell me about yourself question, you tell them what you do, your achievements, and tie it all together by relating what you've done with the role they're offering in three sentences. Once you get the job, though, how do you really shine so that you can be seen as a confident, capable person and be promoted? Let's make sure you aren't shooting yourself in the foot by making some common mistakes. Common mistakes made by women at work to avoid. And I have definitely, like, I'm still working on some of these. I love that she talks about problems women tend to struggle with at work, like using filler words to soften our speech and saying sorry too much. I do that all the time. On the outside, that may not seem like too big of a deal, but it really affects how we're perceived. Saying sorry all the time tells others that you are constantly making mistakes. Only use it for when you uh, actually did something wrong and genuinely have something to apologize for. Along these same lines, women often soften what we say to appear non-threatening, right? Like saying, hey, just checking in on that report. How's it going? Instead of just, hey, can you tell me when you'll have that report to me? Both these things, using filler words to appear non-threatening and saying sorry too often makes you seem less confident and that makes you seem like you don't know what you're doing. Is this right? No, it's just the way it is. So when you stop saying sorry all the time and you stop using filler words and instead be more direct, you'll become more confident and more importantly, others will perceive you as more confident and competent. Doing a great job may get you noticed and promoted, but your boss is busy. You may be doing an amazing job while Chad three doors down is all just made of mediocrity. 
but charismatic and sharing his wins with the boss, and then he gets promoted over you. Thing is, your work won't necessarily speak for itself. It needs someone to speak for it, and that person is you. You have to promote yourself if you want to get promoted, and there is a way to do this that isn't smarmy or yucky. So let's talk about some women's hacks to get promoted. you got to promote yourself, tactically. She has a few ideas that she talks about much more in the book. But basically, first off, and I love this one, if you get an email from a client or colleague that raves about your work, save it in a designated folder and then forward it on to your boss with a quick note just like, hey, check out this great feedback. That's it. You don't. No big deal. Just check out this great feedback. Two, hold an impact meeting, which like coming from the nonprofit world uh, uh, and like small businesses, like I was like, oh, my, this is very much a corporate thing. But I guess in corporations, they hold impact meetings <laughs> with your boss and stakeholders to clearly show where you started and ended on a project, but tie in how your work, how this project impacts the company wide picture and moves the business as a whole forward. That is genius. Show how your work makes the company better. Lastly, create and track key performance indicators for all your initiatives so you have data ready to go when it comes time to ask for a promotion. Or if you don't get that promotion, you can update your resume with all these new key performance indicators. Once you get used to the idea that your boss won't necessarily know how great you are unless you inform them of it, depending on your job and your organizational structure, I think you will find ways to show them the proof of how good you are in a way that feels authentic to you. The important point is you can be amazing at your job and never be promoted because no one knows how great you are. Use your time wisely and do what you have to to share your wins in a non-smarmy way. If these tips have been helpful, I've covered maybe 4% of what's in this book. Seriously. There is so much she goes into in here. This book is to help you get a job and thrive in a system not built for you. It is filled with gold nuggets of job getting and job keeping, wisdom with a ton of mental health information as well. So if you're graduating or have recently graduated from college or are looking to switch jobs and don't want to waste your time sending out hundreds of cover letters and resumes, waste your time being employed at the wrong job for you, or struggle with bad bosses, bad colleagues, toxic workplaces, that book could be really helpful. In Power Mood, Sam DeMassey unlocks the secrets of common frustrations like how to write a powerful resume and cover letter, how to prepare for an interview, how to answer interview questions, etc. But more importantly, she explains how the culture of a workplace works so that people who this system wasn't set up for. She specifies women and people of color, but I would also add neuro neurodivergence as well can thrive in a system not built for you. Like speaking as someone who is neurodivergent, a lot of this stuff took me years to learn and she just tells you, boom, right off. It would have saved so much time and effort and made my work life like way better. This book shows you what positive and productive relationships at work look like. It also shows you what red flags to look for in an interview or maybe when you're on the job. You learn what to negotiate for, how to negotiate, how to handle workplace conflicts, how to set healthy boundaries, fighting imposter syndrome, what to do in your first 90 days, like who to meet with, what questions to ask, what to achieve, so you make the best impression possible. There is so much more, but I'd bore you if I listed it all out. I think you get the impression. Okay, it's broken down into three main parts. Conjuring, landing the dream job and salary that you want crafting, making an impact, building relationships, getting promoted, and cultivating, cultivating your ideal work environment. Now, is it just me or does conjuring, crafting, and cultivating just seem like daily activities at my dream witch commune? Like we just need some time for playing with pets and reading and that's about my perfect day. If you're not really a reader, don't worry, this book isn't cumbersome. The writing style is friendly and authoritative. Don't think that you're in for a 500-page tome of a book. It is 200 very short, readable pages. Since her writing style is fun, breezy, and most importantly, chock full of actionable, no BS information, in my opinion, it's a very easy read, especially for a complicated topic. And like, 
look how pretty this book is. Okay, it's nice on the outside. Yes, it's a lovely cover and stuff. But the inside, it's full color and they've got a lot of useful pop outs. See? Really pretty. Very easy read. They've done a wonderful job making this topic approachable. So why do I trust her? Like, why does my librarian Spidey sense like, hey, listen to this shit. She knows what she's talking about. What I really like about the author is that she was in corporate HR for 13 years. So she shows you what exactly recruiters are looking for, what it's like from their perspective, which is what very few job hunters understand, but can be the key ingredient to getting your dream job. So that way you aren't wasting your time crafting a five-page resume that's just a list of tasks at your old jobs, which will get tossed immediately. And instead, you're drafting a one-page brag sheet that will get you the interview. I think this book is especially great, yes, for new grads, women looking to switch jobs if you've been out in the world for a little while, or anyone who just doesn't get how to navigate the working world. I think it could also be good for bosses to improve teams as you'll learn how to set up expectations and create a working environment that encourages the best out of your workers. The majority of this book is on what to do to get the job and then how to show up every day to be a great worker who gets noticed and promoted. Getting the job shouldn't be your end goal. I know that may sound odd if you're underemployed or unemployed, but hear me out. Your end goal should be having a challenging and rewarding job that pays well, allows you to live how you want, and doesn't make you nuts. If that's what's missing in your life, check out this book from the library. So what do you think? Would this be helpful to you? Have you read it? What did you think of it? Leave a comment and make sure to like this video so that Papa Google spreads the love and, you know, shows this video to other people. Ooh, here's a video that the all-knowing algorithm thinks you would enjoy. That's not creepy at all, Google. Cheers. I got my nails. Can't really, can't really see, but it's awesome. There's jewels in there. Here. They look very Art Deco.